I mean, like the, the thing that I, I mean, like it, as far as like what when, when you look back, what type of reaction did you end up getting? Like, what was it like at first, and how did it evolve, or has it changed? And what's kind of like when you look back on everything? Your your thoughts. So, the chance I had as soon as the press conference was over is that my phone only had one percent of battery left so i looked at the messages on socials uh the next morning and um at first it was a lot of like oh why did he has that question he ruined the party um everything was going so smoothly we had a great show and all of a sudden this guy asked a question about you know the drew gulag thing and he ruined the mood uh, of the room, rude the move of the night, and as the hours progressed, uh, I received more and more support uh, from people within the industry. Um, I also uh, wanted to clarify almost immediately, like my thoughts and what I wanted to do, because by no means my intentions at that press conference were not to take a shot at, at Paul Levesque. I just ask a question that as a reader i would have been interested to know his comments and when you're in that room and that's what i told uh brendan and john when i did their show is that i'm not supposed to be a fan in that press conference room um i'm doing things so that other people can be informed other people can read about what I'm asking, what I'm covering. And that to me was important. That question was important. And so I wanted to clarify that. And um, I was fortunate to receive supports from people within the industry, people like Dave, for example, uh, who supported me publicly. And there were a lot of people uh, in this uh, industry that supported me, that had my back. Um, but yeah, overall, it's just, um, I've seen people, online trolls, and Dave uh, on the show mentioned, and he was right, saying that that when you want to make a living in this industry, you should not pay attention to the negativity. But I'm 21, and that experience will help me grow, will help, help me learn. And I, I've learned that I should not expect anything from online trolls. I've seen people telling that I was a spy uh, paid by AEW to inf you know that I was paid to be to infiltrate um, the press conference, which is absolutely nonsense because the last time I, I had any contact with the AEW press team was like a year and a half ago. So no, I was not paid by AEW. It's total nonsense. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad uh, that I had support from people within the industry and that helped me uh, doing much better actually. Yeah, because I, I really thought this was like, to me, I actually got pretty hot about a lot of things, you know, relating to this, as you know, but uh, one of the things was, is that I just felt that like the reporters in a situation like you, where someone's getting harassed over essentially just doing their job. And uh, I just thought it was like, very important to support you. And the idea of basically doing your job. And, and, um, Sometimes that can be it, it can be very difficult at times because there's a lot of people who really don't want you to do your job. Um, but but that's not who you're that's not who you're but your audience what your audience wants you to do your job. That's the thing. Um, so it's kind of like a weird thing. But everyone everyone who's in the public eye in any form is is going to get um, all. I was just actually like uh, dealing with the or talking with them messaging actually with, with a actually pretty pretty major wrestling star we were just talking about that you know it's just like you know you know it's like it's inherent it's it's unavoidable um when you you know when you're in the public eye but it it's funny because with, with you it was a situation where you know you um I, I don't think that when you did this that there was do you even did when you when you Ask the question. You just probably figured this is a question. It's like no big deal and whatever, right? Like you weren't, you didn't, yeah. you didn't, you didn't expect any kind of blowback. I mean, just got a guy asking a question in a press conference. Absolutely not. And um, to make things clear, that was my first press conference with WWE. And looking back at it, I don't even think my question was 
courageous to ask or problematic. It was a question about something that happened 24 hours ago, uh, back then. And I, I thought, once again, when you're in that room, your job is to cover the event for people that are going to read what you're doing. You're not doing it for yourself. Otherwise, you would use like your nuts uh, application on your iPhone or you would just talk to yourself. So I, I thought it was um, a good question to ask because Triple H's comment on that would be interesting uh, to know about. I really wasn't expecting everything that unfolded from the support, from the criticism. I received like not that much, but some death threats online, which to me is completely crazy to even think about. Um, yeah, I was not prepared to be in the spotlight for like a week and being um, at the start of a conversation about the state of wrestling media, like I couldn't even fathom uh, that that was going to happen. I had a credential to SummerSlam uh, last year, which was in Detroit. I didn't end up going and I didn't even want to really go to the press conference to kind of cover you know, things that you were interesting. I, I kind of just wanted to see the process of it, see how they handle it. When when you were in, in that room, in the media room, did you sense before or as the press conference was going on that this was going to, to not necessarily be full of real questions, but it was going to be a little bit, uh, you know, unlike a, a, a normal sports press conference? Like, could you sense that as you were there? Like, did you talk to people where you were like, hmm... This is kind of interesting that these people are not interested in the same things that I'm in interested in. Um, not really. Um, I had that sense uh, when I asked my question because, and I think you can hear it uh, in the audio, like of the press conference. As soon as I mentioned the name Drew like you can hear audible gasp from mm. some members, a, a minority. I, I want to clarify, a minority of people who gasped, like, they, I really uh, had this feeling of, like, people didn't know why I was asking that. P people thought I was mad asking that. And to me, that was just a normal question. Once again, I don't think it's courageous of me to ask that question. It's just something that happened 24 hours ago and to me has to be covered. Um, and um, so, yeah, I was really surprised by that. But during the press conference, not really i to be honest too um in that press conference my ankle hurts like really bad and um i had trouble uh paying attention i had trouble uh and uh when i said that um it should be no excuse because when you're in that press conference you should be doing your job whether you're tired whether you are hurt or anything i, I don't say that as excuses but i didn't had this feeling of, oh, it's just going to be softball questions or whatever. Um, I, I had this feeling as soon as I asked my question, to be honest. Um, you know, for you as a reporter, especially at your age and everything like that, and, and would you look back, I mean, you, you probably can't look back um, for a couple of years for a full perspective, but looking back a couple of weeks, do you think this is probably something very beneficial to you because as, as far as uh, a learning lesson on many different fronts, you know, as far as whether it's fan reaction or just um, understanding that some people, when you try to just do regular journalism, if it's in a major environment that, uh, you know, you kind of have to learn that not everybody wants that type of a thing, but that, that's your job. Yeah, yeah, that will absolutely be a, a learning lesson for me. I learned a lot from that. Uh, one thing people told me, uh, I heard that uh, on Twitter that maybe it was not the right time to ask that question. To me, I believe that those press conferences are, are also the time to ask those questions. And it's let's face time. it, I'm yeah, I, I'm a nobody in, in the space. I will never have a one-on-one -on -one interview with Trip, uh, with Paul Levesque, I should say. So to me, he's coming to France, um, and it's hard for me, you know, because to spend my own money to cover events like in the UX, etc. This was maybe the only time I could ask 
uh, that question and it was a proper time it was something that happened 24 hours ago uh, but um, yeah it's definitely a learning experience about uh, not trying to pay as much attention as people think about you online and um, I've learned that you know during this past few week i have a real addiction to, to, to twitter because i said like on social medias like oh i'm gonna take some time off i will disconnect etc and i couldn't i was typing my name uh on the search bar to see what people thought about me to see what people were saying about me <laughs> oh that, that and, becomes, that's, yeah yeah that, that's that's the worst thing to do because twitter is a <laughs> is a nightmare but um like i said it's i'm 21 cool. years old i'm gonna do a lot of mistakes and uh, I'm gonna learn from it. And uh, I, I'm very grateful though for all the supports I had from people within the community or even some fans that had my back. And, you know, it was wild to be at the center of attention. It was something I was not prepared. Like very, uh, maybe I'm naive, but I really wasn't expecting everything that unfolded since the press conference. And, um, so yeah, I will definitely learn and grow uh, thanks to this uh, experience. Uh, did you hear anything from them after the fact? Um, no, uh, no one reached out to me. Um, so I know um, uh, from someone that um, I, I read the, the Voice of Wrestling uh, article and um, I heard that uh, th there was a source uh saying that i i will never be invited back um but to to that uh i got um so i actually got the um, the link uh to have the the credential for uh, clash of the castle so maybe I, I will be there uh i at least submitted my uh credential to to be a part of the event so hopefully i will be able to cover clash of the castle because um once again, my intentions were absolutely not uh, to take a shot at Paul Levesque or to take a shot at the company or to have my moment. This was something that pissed me off. If, if, if there's one thing that pissed me off uh, over the, 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 the week is all of the people who said that I wanted my moment. I really don't care if I have 2,000 followers on Twitter or 20. Uh, at the end of the day, like no one recognized me on the streets, etc. Uh, it's just Twitter, and I, I'm not doing reporting uh to have more and more followers i'm not doing reporting uh to have glory i'm doing reporting because i want people um i want to cover the event for the people uh, that are going to read what i'm doing are going to listen to what i'm doing sarah so um, uh, i've had contact with uh chris legend till today uh about the the formula like to have the credential for clash of the castle but that's just it. Nothing about uh, what happened at the press conference. Uh, I, I haven't talked about that uh, to them. So, so, so you expect that uh, you're you're, you're going to be credentialed for the next show? I mean, to me, it's like that's from from their standpoint. I mean, I can't read their minds, but um, from their standpoint, I think that it would be a uh, it would not be something that you would not let someone be credentialed for the next show over. It'd actually um, be a negative message. It'd be a very, it would be a very, it'd be a very negative message from them, and I don't think they want to send that negative message. I don't. I mean, that would it would it would come off very very bad, and I don't think that they would be looking to come off bad. Um, but I mean, like it's the one the one thing you know it, it it was like that you said when you were on with uh, John Pollock and Brandon Thurston that I think really kind of um, rubbed me badly was the idea that somebody from there. And again, it's it was probably one person who, and and it probably made a mistake, um, and which is the only way I could put it, and kind of said like that was a stupid question to ask, because um, I don't think that, like like again like with with WWE, one of the things is is that the the people that are there, I mean like you know that are running the company. I mean Nick Khan's a sports guy. Chris Legentel is, um, you know, I mean he's been all through sports and everything like that. And they know that these questions happen and it's not like considered a negative. You know what I mean? It's like it was something like where somebody's out to get them. Um, and obviously you weren't and everyone knows that, um, you know, and it's just like vehemently, you know, or, you know, like like some of the, you know, they're, they're probably nuts 
um, who write that are exceedingly negative to the point of insanity on on both AEW and WWE. And people like that, yes, I could see not wanting them at a press conference, but someone like with, with, with you know, you asked a question, it was a good question, it was a timely question. Uh, it, it took on a life of its own because of his because of his answer more than anything else, not even your question. I don't, you know, so I don't, um, yeah, I think it would reflect very badly. And I can't imagine, I couldn't even imagine the idea that, um, that they would hold it against you. Um, I don't, I don't think so, to be honest, because, uh, from the contact that I had with, uh, Chris Gentil today, yeah, in the email, he says that to hear from you. And, um, so I would suppose yeah, I, I would, I'm, I'm I would, not blacklisted or, or anything. I just, um, about the comment the, um, the WWE PR person said to me at Backlash, um, I didn't perceive it uh, as a threat or as bullying. I just saw it as, you know, uh, maybe he knew that Triple H, Paul Levesque, I should say, sorry, would uh, answer to my question poorly, maybe. So he said in the heat of the moment that that was a dumb thing to do, which is the, the exact quote. Um, but I don't... I, I moved on. I, I didn't um, uh, took it uh, badly. Like I was surprised by the comments, but I didn't think too much about it, to be honest. Um, and yeah, I don't think uh, I'll be blacklisted or anything uh, because I don't see what I, I what I did wrong. Maybe um, what I regret is probably the delivery of the question. Uh, I think I probably. Uh, could have had a better accent or not hesitating too much. But once again, I'm 21. I'm going to learn. I'm going to grow. And uh, it was my, my first press conference. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.